Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to talk about the PyCharm debugger. The PyCharm debugger is really helpful when it comes down to finding mistakes that you've made in your code, and it becomes particularly useful when you have long blocks of code that you need to check for mistakes. Alright, the first three things that I want to talk about are breakpoints, how to show the execution point, and the step over function. And in order to explain these three things, let's have a look at the code that I've written in the editor at the moment. You can see that I have six print statements, and when I press the run button, I have them printed out in the terminal. So a breakpoint is pretty much the key constituent to any debugger. And a breakpoint allows us to stop the execution of the program at a certain point. In PyCharm, we can set a breakpoint by simply clicking in the margin, and you can see a red dot appears and the line is highlighted in red. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to click this debug button in the top right hand corner. And you'll see that if I click it, then the debug menu opens. And uh, when I click on the console over here, you will see that not all the print statements are executed, but instead, only the first print statement is executed. And that is precisely what the breakpoint has invoked. It has interrupted the program after the very first print statement has been executed. It is also possible to add more than one breakpoint. If I go ahead and press on line six and add another breakpoint, then proceed to resume the program, you'll see that only the first three print statements are executed and then the execution stops at the breakpoint on line six, which means that the print statement in line six is not executed anymore. Another way to stop the execution of the program at a certain point is to put the cursor at the point where you want to stop the execution and subsequently click on run to cursor. Then you'll see that the execution stops at exactly the point where your cursor is placed. So in this case, if I put my cursor at the beginning of line seven, then the print statement in line seven isn't executed anymore and only the first four print statements are executed. Now let's say that you move the cursor to another place on your editor. And after you've done that, you want to find the current execution point again. The way to do that is to click on this sandwich symbol over here, which says show execution point. And as soon as you click it, you'll see that the cursor will jump back to line seven and show us the current execution point. So if I click it, you'll see that the cursor has now jumped back to line seven. Now let us have a look at what the step over button does. We're going to set a breakpoint only in line four and we're going to hit the rerun debug example one. Then we're gonna to go to the console and you'll see that only the first print statement has been printed. If I now go ahead and press step over, then you'll see that the next print statement is executed. So the step over function does what it says. It steps over to the next step in your program. If I go ahead and press this a couple more times, you'll see that each individual print statement will be executed one after the other. So the step over button simply goes to the next step in your program. Okay, the next two things that we're going to look at are the step into and the step into my code buttons. To demonstrate what these two buttons do, I've prepared a small bit of sample code. You can see that in the editor at the moment, we have an import statement, we're importing the module random, and then we have a for loop, and all this for loop does is print five random integers between zero and 10. So if I go ahead and run this really fast, you can see the console output gives us what we would expect, which is five random integers between zero and 10. You'll also notice that I have set a breakpoint on line six. Now that breakpoint will become handy in just a moment, but let's go ahead and now press the debug button. After we press the debug button, we're simply going to go down to the step into button and press that, and let's see what happens. You'll see that a new window has opened in the editor with a random.py module. In addition, it has highlighted the return statement of the random int function. So all the step into button has done is that it has stepped into the function call. So over here you can see that we have the random dot random int function. And once we pressed the step into function, it has stepped into the call 
and gone into the random.py module and opened up the um, function random int. So now that we know what the step into button does, let us now look at what the step into my code button does. Let's close the random.py window and in the debug menu, we're going to press the button step into my code once. You'll see that now, instead of opening the call to the function, it has remained in the code that we have written. So instead of going into the module, it has remained with the code that is ours. So the step into my code button does not open up function calls that lie outside of the code that we have written. One interesting thing that you'll notice at this stage is that regardless of whether we press the step into my code button or the step over button, we're going to have the same result. So one question that emerges is what the difference is between step over and step into my code. To appreciate the difference between the two, let us look at the following example code. Over here you can see that I have a function called addition, which adds two numbers, and a function called multiplication, which multiplies two numbers. Further below I have two print statements. The first print statement calculates two times three and then plus four. So you can see over here is the multiplication. It multiplies two and three together and then subsequently it takes that result and it adds four to it. And in the print statement below we have the expression one times two plus three. Again, you can see that we have the multiplication of one and two, and subsequently, we then go ahead and add three to the result. So we're gonna go ahead and press debug, and the execution will stop in line 12 where the breakpoint is set. If I now go ahead and press step into my code, you'll see that it will go into the first function call, which is the multiplication function. So it jumps over to the multiplication function, and if I go ahead, step into my code again, you'll see it will then move on to the return statement. So it moves through the code successively, and it also moves into every function call, which is in my written code. Okay, now let's go ahead and rerun the debug, and instead of pressing step into my code, we're going to press step over. Once we do that, you'll see the console logs the number 10, and what it's done differently um, compared to before is that it has not jumped into the function call. It has stepped over the function call and simply moved to the next line of code and executed it. Now I do want to show you one more interesting thing at this stage. Let's go ahead and rerun the debug again. And instead of pressing step into my code, we're going to press step into. And you'll notice that in the editor we have two purple boxes and when I press the arrow keys, I can switch between these two boxes. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to choose a function call that I want to step into. Let's say I want to step into the addition call. I'm going to press enter on my keyboard and you'll see that it moves right into the addition function. So I think at this stage, it's starting to become clear that the buttons included in the debug menu allow us to navigate through our code in some way which we want to in order to find the bugs as fast as possible. Moving on, I now want to show you the difference between step into and step out. So up in the editor, I have a function. It is the addition function that we saw a moment ago. And in addition to that, I have a print statement which prints the addition of two and four. If I now go ahead and run the debug, it will stop at the breakpoint. And now I am going to step into, you'll notice that once I pressed it, the line uh, result A plus B is highlighted. So the debugger went over into the function call. And now if I press step out, I am going to move back out of the function call to the print statement. And if I press step over, it will go ahead and execute the line and um, print the sum of two and four. So as you can see, the step into and the step out functions allow us to move into function calls and out of them again, which makes the navigation through the code really simple. Next, I want to talk about the evaluate expression button in the debug menu. So in the editor at the moment, I have a very simple program and all it does is it sums the numbers which are in a list. If I go ahead and press run, you can see that the program has simply summed the three numbers which are in our number list. 
Now if I go ahead and press debug, the program stops at the breakpoint. And over here in the debug menu, you'll see the small calculator sign. I'm going to go ahead and press it. And a small window pops up and it says expression. So let's go ahead and type in some arbitrary expression. Let's say we would like to evaluate the sum of the first two numbers in the number list. So we can go ahead and write the first number and then the second number. Remember when you are referring to an array, the first number is always index 0 and the second number has the index 1. So if I go ahead and evaluate that, I get the sum of the first two digits of the numbers list. Now I can also go ahead and add the final number over here. So numbers list, index 2, and evaluate, and I get the sum of all three digits. Just to give you another final example, uh, let me go ahead and add 12 to the result. So we're going to have the result, and we're going to add 12, then evaluate, and you'll see that the result is 12, because at the moment, the result over here has the value 0, so when we add 12 to it, or 10 to it, or whatever to it, it is just the number over here. So in summary, all the evaluate expression window does is it allows us to evaluate some arbitrary expressions that we want to evaluate to help us debug some code. The very last thing that I want to do is run you through a very easy example of how to debug a program. So for that purpose, I've created a very simple program which has a mistake in it. You can see down here I have a print statement which should evaluate the expression 5 plus 2 times 10 divided by 2. And if I go ahead and run this, you'll see that it says that 5 plus 2 times 10 divided by 2 is 0. However, that is not true. It is meant to be 35. So somewhere in our program there seems to be a mistake. So now go, let's go ahead and set a breakpoint at the print statement and run the debugger. And once we've done that, we can now go ahead and look into the individual function calls by pressing step into. So now I can go ahead and step into one of the individual function calls. Let me go ahead and step into the addition function. So you can see over here we have a is 5 and b is 2, which is just the way it is supposed to be. So everything, everything seems to be right over here. And if I now go ahead and um, press um, step over, you can see that the result of A and B is 7, and then it jumps back to our function. So the addition seems to be correct, because it's adding 5 and 2 correctly. OK, so let's go ahead and step into a different part of this um, function call. Let's go to the multiplication. And over here we can see we have two numbers, um, which is 7 and 10. So 7 is the uh, number that arises when you add 5 and 2. So the first number seems to be correct. The second number also seems to be correct. Now let's step over and you can see the result is 70, which is also correct. So there doesn't seem to be a mistake in the multiplication either. We can step over that as well. And then we can go and step into the final function call. Now let's see what happens over here. We have two numbers, 70 and 2. And then when we move further by pressing step over, you can see that the result of a divided by b is 0. But that's wrong. It's not meant to be 0. And we can see over here we accidentally um, have a division uh, we don't have a division symbol, but instead we have a percentage sign. So this is where the mistake lies. Let's go ahead and change that. And now when we go ahead and press step over one final time, we can now go ahead and rerun the debugger. And let's move through the entire program by simply pressing step over. And in the console output, you'll see that it says that the expression which we tried to evaluate before and which gave us the result 0 before is now 35. So in this very simple example, the debugger has helped us find the mistake. In this small, easy example, that might not be too relevant, but when the programs get bigger, this does become very, very useful. All right, so that's it for this tutorial on how to use the debugger in PyCharm. If this helped you out, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe, 
and see you in the next video.